Today is uh, February 22nd. Um, basketball season just wrapped up. We're supposed to be playing softball starting Monday. I think that's when high school softball tryouts are scheduled. And uh, we just got another six plus today, probably. Still a lot of snow out there. All right, from rolling the uh, rolling out plate here, and building the gear box there. So far, I've been able to use all scrap metal. Um, this one by one tubing came out of the, there's an old horse trailer dividing gate cut up. Um, this piece of plate I pulled out of a reservoir. Got my fishing line up here and picked it up and thought, well, maybe I'll be able to use that. So I turned it up, cut it. Maybe it was one piece, I cut it. You know, maybe it's a piece there. And maybe that's four, maybe six. That's six. Six inch there. So uh, the rest of the stuff, I, it's all just repurposed steel. So. Hopefully I can keep it that way. I don't know. I'm going to get handled or somewhere. So, see where I can come up with those. I'm going to have to get some gas pipe or something. I don't know. Okay, so there's my new 212 Predator motor that I got from Mark Freight. I bolted on this uh, torque converter that I got off Amazon. I didn't, uh, didn't film that. Maybe I should have, but um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's videos online um, showing how to do that. So. You do have to go get some standard bolts because the kit comes with metric stuff and the, and the mounts here on the motor down in there are uh, standard. So um, 5 sixteenths by 24, or 5 sixteenths by 24 by one with fine thread is, are the, is the size on that. So, well, uh, I've got this cover on, let's pull it off. There's a Right behind the secondary clutch, there's a little sprocket, 12-2 sprocket. Um, I plan on running a, uh, I don't know what it was that I bought. It was probably like a 35-tooth um, sprocket here on a, a three-quarter inch uh, drive shaft, jack shaft, out to another, I think, 12 or 14-tooth. Okay, I've trimmed this out a little bit so that the clutch cover will fit on there. Like that. Um, this, is, this is what it will look like. Um, this is the shaft that will go on there. It's too, uh, too big and I don't have, it's an odd size. This is the old jack shaft up the snowmobile. And I'm having a hard time finding a sprocket slot over this. So, and I've cut it. But this is bigger than three quarter and smaller than one inch. Um, I'm sure I can get some calipers and find out exactly what it is. But instead, I just ordered a new three quarter inch key jack shaft that will bolt in similar to this. This is actually a one inch total block, but I'll have a three quarter inch total block. We'll hold that shaft. And so here's the clutch cover off. Um, I'm a little close. I, I centered this motor up um, on the skid. Um, but I'm clear back at the back on my new mounting plate. I should have maybe slid this forward a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of room for this cog drive in front without stretching the track to the point where I could get it on the skid, so I'm gonna be a little tight. Here's my here's my sprocket. So I'll have my drive shaft coming into this gearbox 
and I'll have enough clearance, just, just enough clearance to miss. And my sprocket will stick into that just a hair, but I don't think that's gonna matter because um, this doesn't move. This, this will open up to let this belt shift, um, but there isn't any side-to-side -side movement. So as long as I'm lined up here, I think I'm good, and I'll, I'll have a pretty good short chain that, so I don't have a lot of, of slack. We'll have to see what I can do if I have slack, if I need to come up with a chain tensioner or something like that. But I'm thinking that will give us plenty of room to get a shaft in between here. I have some pillow block bearings that will bolt up right there. I've cut those out so that, that shaft will fit in there. And then we'll go that shaft will come through onto this side. It'll have another sprocket that will go down to this main drive sprocket. So I'm just going to try to get this motor squared up. It's not square right now, you can see, but we'll square it up. Um, get the motor, the bolts for the mount in place and go from there. Okay, there she is for tonight. I decided to cut a hole in my gearbox there so that it can sit down lower. Anyway, motor's mounted, gearbox is mounted. I'm waiting for that jack shaft to nail and put it together. And then we'll move on to the drive shaft. Gotta figure out a way to get bearings into these plates. Alright, so I've got this thing turned on its side. We've got a gearbox in and a chain in the gearbox. I'm just putting in this drive drive to the track and I'm about ready to put these pillow bearings in and then I'll probably call it a night and tomorrow morning I'll put I'll pull it back apart slide the track under it and see if it works see if it lines up so that's where we're at with this project tonight Put a chain tensioner here. This is pretty tight. All right, back at it this morning. Uh, show you the things that I've done since last night. Um, this is the old sprocket off the, in the, that was in the chains case, and this is the old um, chain tensioner. Um, and I've just welded a little bracket on there. It doesn't look good yet. As far as getting cleaned up, well, the place it's all in the, That's the idea, and it seems to be running pretty good, pretty straight. So let me fire it up and I'll kind of show you what it looks like. Tight. 
Okay, we got a slight problem here. Uh, I should have stuck this track on before I started punching holes in these plates to get this bearing in the right spot because now when I push up on this bearing, you can see there's no clearance there. So I've got to figure out what I'm gonna have to do. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to lower That whole, that whole bearing's gonna go down. Same thing on this side. It's gotta come down here and get lower so that I can get some clearance on my track, which means all this work that I did right here. I don't know if it's gonna be in the right spot, so. Well. I guess we'll come back when we get it figured out. Okay, I went to uh, grab a new full saw because I dulled the other one, but lowering that bearing will allow me to get this uh, cog drive in the right spot and give me enough clearance to get this uh, frame and also the track to spin. So that's the goal. We'll see how it comes once we get the bearing in place and the drive set.